Grade nines, welcome to your revision lesson on geometry. In this video, we will cover geometry of straight lines. And when I talk about straight lines, we will look at angles on a straight line and vertically opposite angles. We're also going to cover geometry of parallel lines, and that's when we look for our fun angles. If we see the F shape, we know it's corresponding angles. If we see the U shape, it's co-interior angles. And if we see the N shape, then we know it's alternating angles. And lastly, we're going to cover geometry of triangles, and there were two properties of triangles that you need to know. That is the interior angles of a triangle and the exterior angles of a triangle. So this is our first example, and what do we see in this example? Well, I notice a triangle, and it's a special kind of triangle because it's got these two lines that indicate that it's an isosceles triangle. So remember when we do an isosceles triangle, we can't write isosceles for our reason. Rather, our reason when we see an isosceles triangle is the angles that are opposite equal sides. And that is your accepted reason. If you had to write isosceles triangle, you won't get it right. What do I also notice about this triangle and this specific question is that I have two variables, the same variables, in different places. So I need to try and relate the two variables to one another to form an equation to solve for the variable, because that's our instruction. Solve for x giving a statement and a reason. How on earth am I going to relate these two variables, x and x, towards one another? Well, I see this as the angle on the outside of a triangle, and I know there is a property called exterior angles of a triangle. And exterior angles of a triangle say that the outside angle of the triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So in other words, this angle and this angle, because these two are opposite that angle on the outside. Okay, so that's easy enough because I have this angle, but how big is angle A? Do you agree that angle A must also be 2x because of the isosceles triangle? Here is a side that is equal to this side over here in the triangle, so therefore the opposite angles of this triangle must be equal. So, the first thing I'm going to do is tell the marker that I know angle A is 2x. So, angle A equals 2x is my statement. How do I know this? What is my reason? Because it's an isosceles triangle, but I can't write isosceles triangle. I have to write the accepted abbreviation, and the accepted abbreviation is the angles that are opposite equal sides. So angle A is 2x. Okay, so let's make an equation to solve for x. We know because of exterior angles of a triangle that the outside angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So let's write that as an equation. The outside angle, which is 6x minus 58, is equal to the sum, which means I add, of the two interior opposite angles. How do I know this? What is my reason? Because of exterior angles of a triangle, that property. So now let's solve for x. I've got 6x minus 58 equals 4x on this side. Solving for x, I take the 4x over and it becomes negative 4x. And I take the negative 58 over and it becomes positive 58. So if I've got 6x minus 4x, I'm left with 2x is equal to 58, and solving for x means I need to divide both sides by 2 so that it can cancel, and therefore x is equal to 29 degrees, and that's my final answer. So if x is equal to 29, just an extension of this question, would you know how to answer how big is angle A, C, D? Which is angle ACD? Angle ACD is ACD. So I want to know how big that angle is over there. So I know that angle is 6x minus 58. So what are they asking me to do? They're asking me to substitute x into this expression. So I have 6 times 29 minus 58, 
which gives me an answer of 116 degrees. So this is our second example, and what do I notice? I notice that I've got parallel lines. As soon as I see parallel lines, I must be thinking of finding fun angles. And I also have a triangle, EFG. So let's see what we can make of this. We're told to solve for X and Y. And the first thing when I'm looking for X, I notice here's an X and here is an X. The same variable in two different places. So I need to be able to relate these two together and form an equation. How am I going to relate these two X's together? I wonder if you can see it. Here's a Z. Alternating angles. And what do I know about alternating angles? That they are equal to one another. So that means 3x must equal x plus 42. And that's going to be my statements. What is my reason when I see a z? It's alternating angles and my parallel lines where ef is parallel to gh. Solving for x, I bring that x over and it becomes minus x. So 3x minus x is 2x is equal to 42. Solving for x would mean I must divide both sides by 2. And I end up with x is equal to 21 degrees. And that's x. So if x is equal to 21, I wonder if you can tell me how big is the angle FEG. So FEG's angle goes from here, FEG. FEG is 3x. So what are they asking me to substitute? 21 in place of x. So I say 3 times 21, and I end up with 63. So this little corner here is 63 degrees. Why on earth have I worked it out? Well, I can see that Y is inside a triangle. So if I'm dealing with inside angles of a triangle, there is indeed a property for inside angles of a triangle. I know that the interior angles of a triangle are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, what else do I notice about this triangle EFG? These two straight lines on it, which tells me it is an isosceles triangle. So, like we spoke about earlier, isosceles triangle means that the side, the angles opposite the equal sides are equal as well. So, that angle and that angle must be equal. So, that means angle F must also be 63. So, I'm going to tell the marker that. Angle F also equals 63 degrees. How do I know that? Because of the angles that are opposite equal sides. And how easy is it for to solve for y now? Because I've got one, two, three interior angles and I've got two of them so I can solve for y. So I know that y plus 63 plus 63 should give me 180 degrees because of the interior angles of a triangle. Solving for y would mean that I must take both 63's over and subtract it from 180 and 180 minus 63 and take away another 63 is 54. So y is equal to 54 degrees. For our last example, example 3, I see a lot of things going on here. I see a triangle, I see a straight line, and here I see vertically opposite angles. So we're now seeing lots of things. Okay, let's solve for x first and foremost, because our instruction is to solve for x, y, and b. Let's solve for x, and what do I notice? I've got the same variable x over here and over here. They're both inside of a triangle, so the best way to solve for x would be doing interior angles of a triangle, because here's my third angle. So I know that all of these three angles added together should be give me 180. So 4x plus 8 plus 2x plus 40 should give me 180. Why am I allowed to say this? Because of my property, interior angles of a triangle. So solving for x, I've got 6x plus 48 on this side equals 180. I need to take the 48 over and subtract it from 180, and that gives me 132. So I've got 6x equals 132. 
Solving for x, I divide both sides by 6 because the 6 and the 6 cancel. And 132 divided by 6 is 22 degrees. So x equals 22 degrees. So now in order to find y, what are we going to do with this x is equal to 22 degrees? Well, I can see that y is on a straight line here with x. Look at it. They share a vertex. And from here to here, can you see that they would make 180 degrees? So I know that y plus this angle should give me 180 degrees because of angles on a straight line. So let's write it down. y plus 4, but I'm not going to say 4x, rather I'm going to say 4 times 22, because I'm substituting the 22 in, plus 8 should give me 180 degrees, because of my angles on straight line. So I need to solve for y, 4 times 22 is 88, and 88 plus 8 gives me 96. So I've got y plus 96 on the side equals 180. To solve for y, I need to take the 96 over and subtract it from 180. And 180 minus 96 is 84. So y equals 84 degrees. And lastly, I want to solve for b. What do I see here? I can get the value of 2x because I know x is 22. So this little angle here is 44 degrees because 2 times 22 is 44. So what do I know about this angle here and that angle there? Well, they're vertically opposite because they're two straight lines that pass through one another. And I know that vertically opposite angles are equal. So my equation would say that this angle is equal to that angle. So 44 must equal b plus 7 because of vertically opposite angles. Solving for b must mean I must take the 7 over and subtract it from 44. And b is equal to 67 degrees. Sorry, I mean b is equal to 37 degrees. What am I saying? 37 degrees. So I've solved for all of the variables. Y was uh, X was 22, Y was 84, and B was 37 degrees. So grade nines, that's the end of your revision of geometry. Please complete the exercise um, in preparation for your SBA on Friday. Sorry.